Hi, it's Wolf from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube you know me as Epic Fantasy. And this is my latest tutorial, my latest project. And this thing is a lot of fun. It's a foam castle. How to make a foam castle. And you would be shocked to know how easy something like this is to do once you know a few little tricks. Looks really great. I'm really happy with this. All it is is some foam and some paint. And that's it. You just have to know a few little things about how to do it. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to do it. I love this little thing, and there's a couple of things you can do to make it look good. One of them is, you know, you build a castle in this kind of a shape here. Can you see that inside with a little courtyard? You know, sort of like irregular kind of shapes like this. It's really neat. So I'm going to be um, <clears throat> making another one, a really big, more complicated one, maybe about the size of this whole table here. And it's going to be a castle, that's my next diorama, a castle sieging scene. So I'm going to mount it on a mountain probably and have a big battle scene with trebuchets and catapults and you know, all kinds of fun stuff. This castle is going to be siege, not this one, a bigger one, a more complicated one. And that'll be fun. That's my next diorama project. I did the wall diorama, I did the medieval village, and now it's going to be a castle siege scene. So let's just take another quick look. See how that is, the roof, I love that. You know, a little bit of detail. Let's launch into the tutorial on how to make a great looking foam castle. Diorama's origami, catapults and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees and paper games, swords and shields and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach the art of real creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, the whole thing, like I said, is made out of foam. So I just cut up a bunch of pieces of foam to make the different shapes of the castle. And you can use any tool. I use a hot wire foam cutter. You can use a hacksaw, a saw, knives, anything that works with foam. And kind of various shapes now. Something like this, with the different heights and widths. It kind of looks very interesting. See that tilted wall is wonderful, that slanted wall. And put it all together to form a courtyard in the middle. That's kind of one of the secrets. Is you want that circular shape with a courtyard in the middle. That'll make all the difference and vary the heights and thicknesses. It's just interesting. You can look at different castles. You can look at mine to get ideas on how to do it. So that's that. Let's get to more making of it. Now once we get all the shapes laid out, uh, we're going to start doing some of the detail work. And I'll show you a few different things. I can't show you everything, but I'll show you some of the important stuff. Like make the crenellations at the top of this tower here. You know, you mark it off and then cut it with a knife. Uh, this is a really lot of fun, really, really fun project. I've got to thank Sophie. She did most of the work. So if you like this uh, project, you like the castle, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Give me some ideas. And the secret here <clears throat> is you got all your basic block shapes for the castle buildings, towers and walkway and stuff like that. And you want to add a lot of detail to make it look a lot better. So here's crenellations that are going to go along a walkway. And we'll take a little bit more of a look at this walkway because it's really interesting. You know, just cut out foam to make the shapes like that. See, that's called a crenellation. Uh, you know, that's kind of common what you think of when you think of a castle or a castle wall. And there's another piece. I just wanted to show you a little bit of this piece because it's an interesting little addition to the walkway of the castle and it shows how crenellations can differ because this one slants out a little bit. See, it's got like a nice bulky shape to, the, to that parapet there. And, you know, I have, uh, actually have a website called Medieval Castles. You know, if you like castles, you should check that website out. Just type Medieval Castles. I think it comes right up on Google. But I'm going to be doing a diorama. See, that's really wonderful. We keep continuing with that. So foam is just beautiful for all this kind of stuff. And here's the walkway around and part of the castle that goes on there like this. It's just going to glue right on. And then there's another piece of that other crenellation we made, and that goes on the back. So you can see how that forms like a castle walkway there. See it? On the top of the, the wall, kind of nice. And on the right there is the, um, there's the tower and a staircase. It's really cute. I'll show you a little bit more of that. But, you know, have fun with the, with the foam. You can't make a mistake uh, making the tower tops, the turret tops. You know, just you know, rough cut them and then sand them to round shape. You, know, you can't make any mistakes. And if you don't like it, tear it out and put another one. The one big thing you have to do is you can't glue it all the pieces together and then paint it. It's kind of tricky. You got to make all the pieces individually, fit them together really well so that there's no cracks or anything. So they're nicely fit together into a hole 
And then you can take each piece out and count it, add the details. This is a balcony. Um, see it? Looks really nice. Anything you can do with foam. I love that part right there that goes on the side. All right, the crenellations at the top, the little balcony, and some more details, windows. And you can cut them out if you have some kind of a hot cutter like this. It's really nice. Or you can use, um, you know, an X-Acto knife to cut them. Like this. So this is a bit of a long video. I don't usually do them this long, but it's a little complex. But I, sh I try to show you as much techniques as I can. You know, after we show you, the, you do the rough foam, then you do some of the detail work foam, some of the additions that go on, like the windows. These just glue right on, and the, the way they stick out makes it look nice. You know, then we'll move on to some of the painting. I'm going to show you a couple of painting techniques. You know, the painting makes this castle. It makes all the difference in the world how you do it. See, there's the stairwell that's going to go on the end of that wall top, that wall walk. Yeah, you can do anything with the foam. So, see how it's coming together? A stairway, a door, the windows, the crenellations, and I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit more of that rock. That's just ballpoint pen. You, you just press it in and you write. It makes that nice rock formation. That's how you can experiment. We, we experimented with several different types of rock formations. Okay, looks good. This castle is starting to come together. Really like it. See it? And then we'll glue some more pieces on. A little bit more detail work. You know, some of those high arch thin windows. They're like arrow slots. Kind of a fun thing to do. You can carve them out with you know, an exacto knife, if that's what you have. Now let's look at the details of making the castle. The roofs and the walls. The roofs are just like this. Just lay in consecutive rows of shingles like this. This is going to be red. The red roof looks really good. You just use a ballpoint pen. Go over and over it. You could use a pencil, but the pen works the best. Go over it and over it until those lines are pretty deep. And experiment with the depth of the lines, too. You'll get a real feel for it. See them? Looks good. Maybe trim them a little bit if you want. Now the bricks. Same thing with ballpoint pen. And you can do the whole castle buildings, the whole thing in bricks. You can if you want, but you really don't have to. You just have to do sections of brick like this. Oh, small sections or medium-sized sections. Kind of like a pattern on the walls. And it looks really good. You want to save time. See? A section, a section, like that. Now here, a little bit more of the detail work. Think about how they would go around the windows. That's just a carved piece glued right on there. And you do it. Same thing. Now the bricks for those would go like this, right? With a keystone there at the top. The brick pattern makes all the difference in the world how this thing will look. See in that top section there is a roof section. That'll be painted red too. Now let's do the painting. This is really critical. It really looks good, but it's easy to do. You paint almost everything just black. Like all the parts that you drew lines, you paint that all black. That's like a washing. You want it to black to be thick. You want it to run down into the deep parts, into the narrow, into the thin lines that you drew. Same thing with the stones. If you did a lot of stones, do all of it. If, if the whole thing is stones, then paint all of it black. But if you just had sections like this, then just paint those sections black. Because all we actually want is those lines to be black. Those indentations on the inside. Nice wet. Paint it right in there. See ya? Now let's do the, the um, dry brushing. This is where it really comes out. You want a dry red for the roofs. Just kind of lightly brush it on there. And you don't want it all wet. And soggy, you want to dry. Paint it on and look, see how the black shows through? It's wonderful. <clears throat> Same thing for the walls, except you would use a gray. You use a gray paint to dry brush over the wall sections like this. <clears throat> and you can experiment with the different shades. But see how it's nice and dry? How, see how the brush is wiped off there and then it's, it's dry? That's called dry brushing. So what happens is the top parts are painted gray, 
and the lines in the middle between the stones stay black. <clears throat> so that's really the painting technique. It's really kind of easy. You know, you can experiment with it and have some fun. We had a lot of fun with this. So let's take a look at where we're at so far. Pretty nice. This way you get to see some of it done and some of it not done, give you a sense of how to do something like this. Coming along, we're going to be doing those stairs, everything. All right, this midway point. See the balcony there, and the pattern is different on the balcony floor. So go ahead and do more. Do the whole thing. Different, different shades of gray so we can get a sense for it. Now a little bit more dry brushing or gray <clears throat> on the black stairs. And this shows you dry brushing and how you just lightly brush. So just the highlights happen, like on the tops of the stairs. See the edges. It's a nice technique. And remember, your doors, you can paint them brown for like wood. <clears throat> okay, to finish it off, we painted a piece of foam board, green, and then glued it all down. So that's that. Let's take one last look at it. Completed. Yay, I love the red. I love the walls. It's got a great look to it. See some nice detail. You can do as much detail as you want. <clears throat> Thanks for watching my uh, video. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. If you make a phone castle, make sure you send me a picture. Let me know about it or post a YouTube video. I'll add it as a response. Um, lots more stuff on my website. It's normancastle.com and here's my YouTube channel. There's Trim Castle on the top in Ireland. That's Hammond Castle in Massachusetts in the middle and how to make 3D dungeon tile on the bottom. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you.